John Weekend is a wonderful sculptor in St. Louis who's enriched our area and many other areas around the world with his lovely creations. I met him because in the garden we had a Cora, a beautiful statue of a little girl which he had done earlier and then eventually acquired a pair of, of teenagers running which we set into the forest there. And I met him in connection with his works at the garden and through our mutual friend, Mary Faust. And as I got to know and appreciate him, I realized what a wonderful addition or contributor he is to the cultural welfare of our community. Peter Rayburn is one of the more brilliant men that I've met in my life. He, he, uh, his work with biology and uh, the environment and uh, horticulture is just unbelievable. I had met Peter before, but we became friends after the Cora. We started becoming friends, and then um, as time went on, he came to the studio, and I cast his hand holding a vase, and you know, we became friends. And um, he loved what the garden, our mini garden here, the property. So he was always writing letters and helping us try to uh, get the garden and the park on the National Registry, and he became a very big supporter of uh, the studio. Don Weekend is a very wonderful, creative person, but extremely humble, unpretentious, and willing to share whatever he knows or whatever he can contribute in art, in humor, in humanity to anyone that he meets. He's a really lovely human being who wants little for himself and wants to give much to others, communicating beautiful messages through his wonderful sculptures in all kinds of human endeavor fields. Always a pleasure to be with, always with a good sense of humor, always creative and never pretentious, but striving for the best. That's the way Don is. It, well, it's all about communicating to people through his work. Don's sculptures are artistic but highly representative of their subjects and he uses the art and the medium for the particular sculpture to illustrate facets of the personality of the people whom he's depicting in these sculptures and he's able to use various degrees of uh, total reality to slightly abstract impressions of the people and create sculptures that are both attractive and also artistic. So Peter and Pat organized when the uh, Vatican sent me a duplicate of what Francis wears on the cross. So I had to re-sculpt it. So if you notice, notice the photograph is a three-quarter portrait. There's frontal, there's profile, and three-quarter. So I had to re-sculpt the cross on a three-quarter view. Very important that we make it historically accurate. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Well, the project actually started thinking about sculpting Pope Francis back in 2013, right after he was uh, voted as Pope by the Cardinals. And I was with uh, Archbishop uh, Carlson at the time. We were having dinner at Annie Guns, actually, because I had invited him out here. And he knew that I had created the John Paul piece for uh, Regina Clary. So the Archbishop looked at me and says, Don, you really need to sculpt something on Francis. Um, he's really going to be a leader. 2016 went 
My friend, Dr. Peter Raven, uh, emeritus at Missouri Botanical Garden. He and his wife were our good friends, and they came by and showed me some photographs that uh, Pat Raven, Peter's wife, had taken of Francis. And I have seen the world, about 65 countries, through the long lens of a Nikon D800. I've been fortunate enough to have 27 photos in National Geographic products, four photos on PBS, and uh, several other opportunities uh, have come my way. But this particular photograph, as usual, I was in the gallery, three rows behind my husband, waiting for the beginning of the pontifical audience. We were there for the meeting of the National Acad of the, excuse me, the uh, Pontifical Academy of Sciences. So here I am in the audience, waiting for the service to begin, and the Pope is looking very pensive. I pulled out my camera, a Nikon D800 for those of you who know cameras, with a hundred millimeter lens, and took the shot. And I think the thing that I like most about this portrait of Pope Francis is the grazing light from the window that was behind him and out of frame. It just illuminates his edges and gives it an elegance that I could not have achieved with frontal lighting alone. So as you can see, it's the lighting that makes this image so special. The glint on his ring, the grazing light across the side of his face, it's the lighting that gives it its soul. His expression is priceless. So when Don saw this on the back of my phone, we were at a cocktail party, and he was just asking about our last trip. He saw this image and was riveted by it. I didn't realize that he had been thinking about doing a sculpture of Pope Francis for a while and had just not found the images that were compelling to him. But when he saw this one, he made up his mind in an instant that that was the image that he wanted to use. Pat took a great photograph in November of 2016 of Francis listening to them. And he always had this kind of pose where he's really doing this, concentrating. I fell in love with that photo and I thought, you know, this is the photo I'm supposed to sculpt. So it was that spring of 2017 when I started working on that project. And Peter Raven had set this up that the, the piece would be presented to the Pontifical Academy of Science, Sciences, honoring them uh, and recognizing the Pope as the figurehead. The Pontifical Academy of Sciences was founded in 1603, and actually Galileo was the first president. It then morphed into various similar institutions with the modern version of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences having been started by Pius XI in 1936. It coincidentally the same year I was born. The Pontifical Academy uh, has 80 members appointed for life and a few other honorary members. Among its members are some 25 Nobel Prize winners and representatives from many countries all around the world. About 10 of them are Americans and the rest are from various countries. And it advises the Pope on matters of science and technology without any moral discrimination in the answers is not expected to advise on moral or religious matter. Now I was selected because of uh, my background in science and especially global science because at the Missouri Botanical Garden we opened up a program that reached all the corners of the world. I'm actually a member of about 20 National Academies of Sciences uh, uh, recipient of the National Medal of Science in the United States and various other honors and uh, that's why I was selected and then eventually uh, approved in 1990. Here he is, let's welcome Pope uh, Francis.
this culture of uh, care for the environment. And it's the only body of its kind operated by any religious institution in the world. And as a result, the Catholic Church has been a little more receptive to, to ideas such as evolution, which has been no problem for them since the 1920s or 30s. They decided this spring that the, the first conference would be this, this past September, uh, from the 8th to the 10th, and that they'd like to present it then. So with Peter's help, went to Rome and set up the unveiling, and it was magical. Uh, with uh, Francis entering the private chamber there in the private residence, uh, which was amazing, uh, we presented it to him. And the amazing thing was he, he reached out, touched my hands, both his hands, and said, Don, you, you made me look like I'm thinking. And he did his pose. It was just the coolest thing. So I feel like the photographer um, whose picture has been taken by Andy Warhol and made famous. My photograph is an image that took me one second to snap the shutter. Don has put years into this piece and you'll be excited to see it. I am thrilled to be part of the team. And I was only there because of Peter. My impression of Don's bas-relief of the photograph of Pope Francis was always excellent from the beginning. He was clearly inspired by the original photograph and took it to new depths of meaning in his sculpture in making the crucifix which the Pope wears from an original very realistic and very much of a center point diagonally across the the uh, image of the bas-relief, he created a work of art that depicts a very thoughtful and caring man, which is what Pope Francis is. He himself, Pope Francis, when presented with it, re said, well, it looks like I'm thinking. He's a very modest man, too. My impression of the four who have served as Pope during the 31 years that I've been a member of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences has been uniformly interested, but very impressed indeed by, the, by Pope John Paul II in his very short reign in all the good things that he did for the church. And then again, very impressed with Pope Francis from the very beginning I really believe that faith and sciences go very well along with one another. However, they shouldn't be confused with one another. Science uh, provides a series of hypotheses about the operation of the natural world. Scientists argue about these hypotheses and when they agree sufficiently and sufficiently widely, then that becomes the best conclusion that we can reach about them. The Holy writings in the Bible should not be regarded as representative of science, but they're representative of the impressions people have, the feelings and emotions that people have, and the kinds of life that they would like to lead. The facts, however, don't change, and that's why it's remarkable and very useful that the Catholic Church has a body that's, that does vet the scientific and technical literature and the scientific and technical fields that are of the greatest interest in putting together its papers and advice for the Pope. I have been honored to be a member myself since 1990, so for 31 years, and I, well, it is, of course, a live membership, as I've mentioned. It's a very interesting body, as you might imagine, filled with congenial and highly intellectual people who have many good ideas, a great deal of knowledge, and a sensible bit of humility and wit, which makes them a joyous group to meet with and to talk with and enjoy deal, dinner with. The home of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences is the Casino Pi of Pius IV, built in 1561 and intended as a summer home, which is kind of interesting because it's about uh, three or four hundred yards from the main residence of the Pope. 
a summer home for the Pope in that in those days, and it's a beautiful building surrounding a lovely fountain and a treasury of 16th century frescoes, uh, stucco reliefs, mosaics, and, and the fountain, the central fountain. It's wonderful that our just completed bar relief that Don Weekend has fashion will go into and be a part of the exhibits in that wonderful building.